everyone. I'm Reverend Deborah Gay. It is my joy to be your host today. And we have a wonderful guest speaker bringing the message to us in her own unique way, Reverend Karen Russo. Welcome, Karen. <laughs> this summer has been very fun to get sort of a a potpourri of different science of mind speakers and hear perhaps the same kind of message but delivered in, in, in your unique personality. So thank you. And I'll tell you more about Karen in a little bit later in the service. But if you are new, I just want to let you know, take a look at these blue bags out in the lobby. It has a lot of information in it to learn more about who we are. And as you learn more about us, if you want to connect with us, in it is a connection card. And one of the things you do is just write down your email address. And then we send you in the week a spiritual practice from our senior minister, Reverend Kathy Ann. And that way, we can do something together, even when we're not physically connected, to connect as a community, to reunite in the one life, and, and be community wherever we are. These tools of technology bring us so many different pathways to reconnect, even when we're in our busy summer lives. And so one of those ways is, if you have a smartphone with you and you want to take a picture of anything that's happening up here and post it on your Facebook page and simply say, you know, there is a lot of good happening here at CSL. Come share it with me. That's the way we invite others to take a look at what is the Center for Spiritual Living and the fun that you have and the good that's evolving in your life. We share that with each other. And we do have rituals here at CSL, right? Sometimes, sometimes it's said science of mind doesn't have rituals. Well, we do. We have the birthday ritual where we honor everyone once a year. So if you had a birthday last week or this week, stand. We'd love to give you a gift. Happy birthday, all you July babies. So sweet. So here at CSL, we begin everything with prayer, right? So we begin our Sunday service also with prayer. And we use music as the tool to open up our hearts, reconnect with that divine spark within us, maybe get beyond the mind chatter. So uh, our musicians will begin that entrance into the one connection with life. And Reverend Harold will then bring us through in prayer itself this morning. Let us take this time right now to come to the well. The well of the divine within each and every one of us. For even in the hum of the speakers, there is a call for us to go deeper. Take that breath and to remember who we truly are. For there is only one life, the life of the divine living, breathing within each and every one of us. No matter who we are, no matter what we've been through, that well of love, of peace, of perfection can never change. So I allow the waters within that well to wash over me, to wash over each one of us so that we can recall the perfection of the divine as who we are. And so I open this service knowing that I see spirit all around, for I know it within myself. I know it within each and every one of us here. There is no place where God is not. And so I open the service knowing that our entire musical team is blessed 
and every note is perfect for whatever our heart needs to hear. That our musical guest, Kit Holmes, opens us up to a deeper place. That even the wisdom that moves through Reverend Karen Russo is the perfect things we need to hear in regards to matters of money. For if God is omnipresent, God is within everything. And so I invite you to just say along with me to open this time within your own very heart of hearts. Yes, yes, yes. Spirit is everywhere, within, around, through me, and everyone. And so it is. So now, let me tell you just a little bit about Reverend Karen. So Reverend Karen is the spiritual leader of a global group, which she calls Money Keys, the Money Keys community. She's written a book which is called The Money Keys. It's Unlocking Peace, Freedom, and Real Financial Power. So Karen has an MBA from Columbia University. And she's accomplished a lot in the secular world. She's a corporate trainer and a salesperson, as well as being an ordained CSL minister. Now, there are many of us who have come to ministry midlife, after a career of accomplishment in the secular world and finding that there is something calling us forward into ministry, adding the spiritual understanding to all of our accomplishments and achievements in the secular world. And Reverend Karen is an example of that, that she is weaving together these insights from the various parts of our, of our worlds to open up new pathways, new doorways, new ways into understanding how to revitalize and, and bring abundance into every aspect of our life. So in this 25 years of work in both secular and the spiritual realm, she's developed a passion, a passion for the power of spiritual money mastery. And that's what she's going to share with us today. And so let us open our hearts today and give her a warm CSL welcome, Reverend Karen. Isn't Reverend Dever really fantastic? Yeah, she really is. We overlapped in ministerial school, and we were laughing earlier today. I was, uh, I was one of the cool kids' uh, seniors when she was a freshman, so I was one of those ones who's like wearing those low slung pants and smoking cigarettes in the bathroom. Yeah. You know. uh, that's what I, th when I came into ministerial school, there was a group of kids, and they all knew like which classes to take and how to pray, and you know, anyway, so. Uh, we always love the cool kids, don't we? Yeah, and that's who you all are today, the cool kids. Yeah, as I prepare to come here, it's very interesting. Um, I visit spiritual centers and women's networking events and real estate clubs and groups all over the world. And it became so clear to me that the conversation, what's the money for, sometimes it takes on these odd little shadows where it can be like a f spiritual conversation about money can be a little bit shamey. Uh, if you haven't, if you've done your spiritual work and you are using the law of attraction appropriately, then this should not be an area of problem. Do you know, it's just like a slight little bit of shamey. And then sometimes there can be a little bit of like, oh my, a little, a little bit of, um, we should not have to talk about this in a spiritual center. It's inappropriate somehow to be crass and bring money topics in. So sometimes we have a little bit of that. And what I caught as I really opened my heart and mind to you this day is that we're kind of well beyond that level of conversation here and that it felt to me like you all want to have a courageous conversation about including money stuff as part of your spiritual evolution. Is that true? Yes. That's what I thought. So that's why you're the cool kids. 
I'm sure your behavior in the bathroom is high level. Yeah. <laughs> Here. And I also want to recognize that I had a little Facebook conversation with uh, Dr. Kathy Ann. I said to her, you know, what, what's your uh, energy around prosperity in your community? And she said, I really want to have people connect that our financial flows connect to our creativity. Yeah. And that's a great way to say, you know, it's not about the money, it's what's the money for which is a courageous conversation in a world where we get a lot of messages that there's lack. So if you look at media and government and politics and conversation, this is what you get. <laughs> this is the earth squeezing, tightening the belt. And this is what we have in a lot of the uh, kind of, you know, mass conversation is there might not be enough, and since there's not enough, you might want to hold back or hoard or be concerned, and that this idea that there's shrinking resources. And if there's shrinking resources, then withholding is kind of a noble thing to do. But what I want to say is, this is an image. Tightening the belt, it comes from the idea that when you're actually hungry, if you tighten a piece of string or rope or belt around your waist, you won't be so hungry, which is a very vivid image that is not really relevant for first world people like us who've got clean water and a safe place to sleep. And really, you know, our concerns are not survival concerns. And so it's, it's on us to say, let's take our conversation up a level so that we're not wasting our energy worrying about survival when really we could be using our energy for greater and greater. Yes? Yeah. We're gonna take a look at what is money. And you're gonna have a fresh perspective about the idea of money itself, which helps you be more empowered. And then we're going to say, who are you? Uh, how, do, how do you become your own, what I would call mental equivalent, to use a science of mind term, become your own mental equivalent around money, and then What's the God idea? How do we really understand the distinction between source and channel? And I wanna give a lot of love to the folks that are live streaming, love streaming with us. Uh, this is a message that's, that's a message for the here and now and for everyone that we're touching. We're glad that we can participate. Let's talk about money. So we've got some symbols of supply up there. Do you see those? And uh, we're gonna have an experience that what money is or isn't is based on how we think about it. So I'm gonna invite you into an experiential activity. It's completely optional whether you play in, but I think you'll have some fun with it. Are you good for that? Yeah. Please put your hands, your paws, on something that represents your money life right now. So grab your wallet or your purse, Sir, that's your wallet, not your neighbor's. <laughs> I've got my Mileage Plus Visa United card that every time I swipe it, I get miles for other purchases. That represents my travel-y money life. So you've got your something that connects, represents your financial life. And I'd like you to just anchor into it factually. It's good to be connected to facts. So the reason you're holding it is I want you to be present to facts. And if you like, you can half close an eye, bring your attention towards yourself, and call to your mind and your heart and your energy your current financial situation. So it could be the monies that flow in from job or investments or family. It could be the obligations or debts that you, liabilities that you owe portfolio, divorce, business growth, expansion, whatever, whatever's happening. And anchored in the facts of your money life, let yourself do this, two rounds of reflection. The first round, we're gonna compare our money situation to someone you think is financially better off than you co-worker, someone in the news, neighbor. Let yourself do it. Compare your financials to someone you think is better. And no right or wrong answer, 
what thoughts or feelings emerge? And if you are, feel free to, you can call them out. Both. Both. Other thoughts or feelings as you compare to someone better. Thank you. Admiration. Admiration. Envy. Envy. Unequal. Unequal. Joy. Joy. Focus. Focus. Example. Example. Possibility. Possibility. Freedom. Freedom. Gratitude. Smart. Smart. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for that. That was round one, so you can shake that off. Okay, and now you're still holding on to your financial situation. It probably hasn't changed, although if you're in some kind of day trading thing where it's gone up a lot, please see me after. I would like to know about that. Uh, so you've got your financial situation, and this round of reflection, let yourself do it. Compare to someone you think is financially worse off than you. So even in this beautiful city, there's places, there's people who are, safe place to sleep and clean water is their issue tonight. There's a billion of our brothers and sisters that way. So somebody at work, a neighbor, in the news, someone you think is financially doing not as well as you. And what feelings emerge? Sadness, Compassion. Compassion, Compassion, love, empathy, empathy survivor, 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 obligation, wholeness, gratitude. gratitude. Again, no right or wrong, but thank you for that. And you can shake off round number two. You can put your money substance back where it came from. Ha ha ha, sir, that's, well, maybe it is your neighbor's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you notice there? It's likely our situation didn't change, but what did change? Feelings. Feelings, perspectives. So even if it was a tiny little bit of difference, what I invite you to notice is when your, your situation is not the determinant of the feeling, perspective, and experience that you have about money. No matter what your situation was, depending on how you think about it, depending on what story you're telling, you're gonna have a different experience. So this really is the first big idea I want to share with you, is that these symbols about money or the digits on the computer screen or the things that it says on the pieces of paper, they literally do not mean anything except for the meaning we place upon it. Money, in and of itself, is neutral. It's nothing. Meaning about money is very powerful. And you and I, we're the meaning makers. We're the author of our money story. So this, in many ways, for some people, is a big takeaway. I have a, a dear friend, uh, we'll call her Angelica. Beautiful, light being, deep student of A Course in Miracles, works with more of the esoteric energies, and she wants so much to give her gifts to the world. But when she did this exercise, what she realized is her story about money was the money system is polluted. It's corrosive. It's corruptive. I want to keep my energy pristine. I don't want to get involved in this polluted system. So for her, what was happening is she was actually retreating from the financials in her practice, in her work that she did, and she wasn't making a big enough difference in the world given the light that she has within her. So when she did this activity, what she realized is, oh, I wanna change my story. I wanna change it to be, I bring this light-filled, pristine, mystic energy into everything I do, including my money. So she's now got a quarter million dollar and, and up Course in Miracles Global Healing Ministry. And she's helping people, <clears throat> excuse me, all over the world because she's connected to a story that's more empowering. So that really is my big invitation for you. What's the meaning you want to make about money? Sound good? Yeah. And now we're going to talk about you. So we brought an image of an individual who's got, I feel like this is a face that's lit up with wholeness, th with the idea that we're whole, perfect, and complete in the divine. 
So I know that Dr. Kathy Ann and all of your speakers and your ministers and your practitioners, this is what they're saying, right? Do you all believe it? You're whole, perfect, and complete? <laughs> so let's have whole, perfect, and complete also apply to money. And here's a way that you can become your own mental equivalent. You want to think about where are you already wealthy? So I'll tell the story of wonderful Christy. She's a, a Canadian gal who's part of our Global Money Keys community. And every time she posts a picture on our private Facebook group, it's always her at the top of some snow-covered mountain with some large dogs and her handsome partner. And they're always like, you know, out in nature, um, thoroughly enjoying the natural world. That's where she feels a sense of connection to everything. But when I met Christy, she came into our community. And do you know what her financial goal was? get out of debt. I want to get out of debt. I'd like to pay off my student loans for my Reiki healing. I'd like to make sure I get my tax obligations taken care of. My goal is to pay off my debt. Let's get those debts paid off. Let's pay off the debt. <laughs> and it's hard for me to even say it with any kind of energy, because can't you feel it's like, that's just a goal. Now, by all means, she needs to do what? But as a financial vision, it was kind of missing the juice that would really pull her forward. So she changed, in, and she just changed. It wasn't just the wording, it was the energy. She said, you know what I'm doing? I'm sharing my healing gifts with the world in a profitable, prosperous way. And just even that kind of shift made it fit more with the way she really feels about life. And what she used as a model was how she feels when she's out on those mountains with her dogs and her beloved, out there in the natural world. She said, I feel wealthy in nature. I feel like the divine is spirit is right here with me. I feel like anything is possible. I feel like I'm part of something greater. And I feel like I'm here for a purpose. So she took that wealthy whole feeling from nature and she said, I'm gonna apply that into my money life. I ask you, where are you already wealthy? Some people will say it's my friendships. I feel like if I want a friend, I, I'm gonna be a friend. And that my, the circulation of my friendships is always positive and it's always enriching and I don't worry that I'm gonna lose friends. Others will say, I feel like the physical body can be an instrument of the divine. And I feel like, you know, I've accepted this body as the body temple. And that's where I feel wealthy and whole. So find your area of material living and see how it can be a model for yourself of what's possible. Now, this is a classic science of mind idea. Dr. Ernest Holmes would call it a mental equivalent. And sometimes if you go and sit with a, a prayer practitioner, they'll say, you know, what do you want prayer for? And, you're, and you'll say, I want to expand my mental equivalent. I want to have a bigger consciousness of peace or joy or love or grace in this particular area. And what I'm saying is you do not have to look outside yourself for a mental equivalent look within. Does that feel good? It does, doesn't it? It's like, yeah. And we're going to talk about the God idea. We've brought the science of mind teaching symbol here. And you all understand the idea that spirit acted upon by law becomes the material expression of our lives. So source, infinite, loving, intelligent, unconditional source reveals itself through channels. Kathy is an earnest gal who's got that entrepreneurial zeal. She's had it for a long time. And when I met her, her business was, she was very excited about being kind of a smart promotional marketing person. And the products she was creating were these little plastic leave behinds. They're tchotchkes, little um, either pens or globes or little things for the mortgage industry. 
So she was the person who would supply thousands and thousands of little plastic things for ABC Mortgage when ABC Mortgage went to a big consumer show. So those of you who are business coaches right now, you would probably not recommend plastic promotional products for the mortgage industry as like today's business, right? So, because plastic promotional products are on their way out because of environmental concerns, and the mortgage business is a business that's more in retracting from leave behind type marketing. So Kathy was, facing, you know, she had marketing creativity, but she's facing a business where the dynamics were not growth dynamics. And here's how she was really suffering. She'd get up in the morning, and she'd feel this jolt, and it was really a jolt of fear, kind of worried about what was happening in her market. So then she'd rush in to her home office, and she'd sit in front of her computer and she'd scroll through the emails and see, mm, this vendor wants to cut the margins back. Or she'd, she'd realize there's no response from one of my favorite customers, they're not even emailing me back. She'd make a phone call and hear that XYZ Mortgage Company doesn't wanna do anything, um, they're pulling back their marketing budget. So that was her pattern. Wake up, mm, jolt of fear, rush on in, loss, 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 and then, she, then she'd feel frozen. So you can see this, this kind of, um, it's like this almost became her morning practice. It's painful, right? Because we can all feel that. It's like if the fear jolts you, the energy really goes down. Interestingly enough, the place that she needed to shift was not so much what strategies is she using in the office, she needed to intervene first thing in the morning. So she needed to revi revive her meditation practice. And she began by just, when she woke up, take a deep breath, and the first place she went was her quiet room. And she would listen to, we have a Money Keys medication that's a 18 minutes, peace be still. That was her favorite one. Peace be still, peace be still, peace be still. Basically, she was doing what Kit was saying. She went to the well. She would go to the well, get that sense of peace established, reconnected to a spiritual connection that she really had. And with that sense of peace, she feels more connected to source, which is within. And when you're more connected to source, present moment. So then when she went into her office, she still had to look at what does this vendor want in terms of margins, right? but she's calm and creative. And so what started to happen for her is that because her energy's not lost in fear of the future or upset about the past, new ideas came in. The, uh, the Wealth Now group, they're, they're working with intuition in uh, today's, today's lesson. When, when you're in the present moment, intuition can spark. And for Kathy, she got an intuition about, I wanna use my creative promotional ideas, but I wanna use them in service of something where there's growth and opportunity. So she started to design and distribute these uh, sustainable water bottles for the Denali Park in Alaska. That was her first client. And with, what a great idea, right? The sustainable water bottles are something where people really want them. She lo you know, really cares about parks and places like that. So now she does promotional products that are relevant to not-for-profit types of organizations and causes. So she's still got to work her job, right? She's still got to care about margins and do her marketing, but she's doing it from a place of connection. So this is my encouragement in, in this area of source and channel. Spiritual source is the infinite, creative, loving intelligence. And like a Kathy, when you're anchored in spiritual source, that's where we get our spiritual security. Channels, material channels through which money flow, those are things like good-looking, generous lover, fabulous real estate portfolio, secure job and pension, uh, exceptional investment allocations. I hope you have lots of gorgeous, generous lovers and you know, great real estate and portfolios and jobs. Believe me, we love channels. 
but we don't want to think our spiritual security comes from a channel. This is where people suffer the most, I think, with money, is when it's like that money, that brother-in-law or family loss, that money was my good, or this job is my good, or uh, you know, this thing in the future, if I can only get there, this many people in my downline, or this number, then I'll be okay. Channels come and go, that's their nature. They're made of this world. So with channels, the encouragement is respect them. Be good stewards of them. This beautiful community is a channel for spiritual growth and inspiration, for thriving individuals to make a difference in the world. You wanna respect your channel. You wanna give to the channel. You wanna have channels be healthy and vital. But the channel, it's like the finger pointing to the moon. The channel can come and go its source where our security really lies. I can feel like you all really, you understand this, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes people will say, how do I, how do I start and keep this idea of a spiritual approach to money going? So we're gonna show a tool called the money map. And the money map is a framework for understanding that our wealth happens through us, not to us. For those that come to the workshop this afternoon, we're gonna be working with your money map. And if you can't make it to the workshop, by all means, come give us your name and email. We'll get you this stuff digitally, or we have a nice little special package if you wanna take a book or a thing home if you're not gonna be able to come to the workshop. In the money map, it's everything in one place. It's you in the center. The big question is what's the money for? What's the high idea you're serving? And then our wealth leadership occurs through three areas, spirituality, beliefs, and habits. Our spirituality is our connection to the divine about money, beliefs is thought, emotion, and conversation, and habits are our actions and systems. And one of the things I noticed in being all over the world is that sometimes at the spiritual communities, people are strong in abundance ideas and consciousness, working their beliefs through prayer, but maybe missing what? habits, or being light on the habits. And sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but 2004, 2005, before this uh, message came out through me, is I was going to all these like millionaire mind type um, conferences where everybody was like, high five and, and woo, and we're all gonna like be real estate investors and do a little foreign exchange trading. I'm gonna have a couple of multi-level marketing businesses, you know, all by Wednesday. and. <laughs> Maybe it was just, was that just me? Maybe it was so, oh, did anybody else go to, all right, so. And what I noticed there is awesome habits and strategies. You know, lots of great tactics and approaches and good mindset stuff, good belief stuff. You know, you wanna have a consciousness of a both and rather than either or, but what, what do you think was missing? Yeah, so missing for, missing for me was like, you know, how does this connect with the idea that there's no bigger little in God? that we only have the present moment. You know, it's like, I just, I needed to have all three together, and that's really where the money keys, the money keys practice is a, is a cohesive practice around wealth and money. And uh, I'll tell you a story about uh, using a process like the money map, it helps you to know sometimes where do you start, where do you keep going? Because probably you're all working all things all the time. But uh, we had a gentleman, Tim, he had started an internet cafe in a southwestern city and uh, had done personal guarantees on some of the loans and the lease equipments. And Tim's like, you know, creative guy, um, very much into what, you know, social media and marketing and all of this. And when the economy shifted in that town and that cafe closed, he ended up having a personal bankruptcy and wanted to come out of it and create the, his next like incubator, marketing, visionary, coaching type of thing. And he was ready to do that, but when he looked at the money map, he realized, oh, Papa needs cash flow. I have been ignoring the habits area. I've been ignoring circulation. And rather than launch poor, what he immediately saw is, I wanna use the law of circulation to really get into giving and receiving, get my habits in gear, I'll have a better foundation. So he went out and got a part-time gig 
to you know, get him some stability before he launched his next venture. Sometimes what I notice in our spiritual communities is there's, well, not, it's not, you know, sometimes I just notice that, you know, so, so much where it is, but that we could all have even more respect and appreciation for the fact that it's not really an all or nothing that really works for people. So I, kn I know people who have wonderful uh, gifts or talents or art, like the, you know, things that you wanna bring forward, but if you put all this pressure on that thing to try to have it be a six-figure thing by the, you know, the end of the quarter, it feels like all this unnecessary pressure. And to me, what I've noticed is the people who really have a very healthy and vital approach to their money are often having multi-channels and welcoming and blessing them all. So, all right. So it's nice to have a, a map or a framework for all three areas. We've given you some good stuff. Money is neutral. It really doesn't mean anything except for the meaning you put on it. You and I, we are already wealthy. Let's use ourselves as a benchmark or a best practice. And God is our source. And when we know that, there's a sense of spiritual security that can really serve us no matter what happens with the channels. And what I wanna say is uh, this kind of approach is very powerful for us as individuals. So I've been really in many ways talking about you and your money, you know, very individually focused. And that's important. It's, this is in many ways like as people spiritually mature and you become even more of a thriving individual, there's no limit to how excellent you can evolve yourself into an even more effective, what I would call wealth leader, spiritual wealth leader. And so we're gonna say an affirmation together, if you choose, that I think is almost the ultimate form of, of money as an act of self-love. So you'll see this is an affirmation that uh, one of the gentlemen in one of our uh, gr early groups created and people just seem to love it. So shall we say this together? Together. I love and respect myself enough to live a financially prosperous and responsible life. Yeah, and so it is. It feels good, doesn't it, to have this be, this is my self-love and my self-respect. And there's no good that's just good for us as individuals. And this is why, you know, it's so precious that our teaching says, I can't lift myself without lifting another. You know, because we're all connected. And so I'm gonna say a, a little bit of a wonderful Ernest Holmes quote that's from this thing called you. Some of you will recognize this. He says something like, you rob no person when you discover your own good. You harm no one by being happy. You steal from no one by being prosperous. You know, you limit no person's prosperity when you step into the kingdom of your good and possess it today. Really, as we look at the world lifted up, the, in some ways, it's not a do it first and then the world will be lifted up. As we release our fear and our overwhelm and our upset about anything, especially money, we are better poised to be of maximum service to the world. And especially for those of us who you know, for goodness sake, the level of privilege and opportunity and well-being that we have is profound. And it's not for us to feel, I'm not saying for us to feel guilty, it's, for, it's like when your heart is so full with thankfulness, then you stop wasting even a moment of your precious time and energy worrying about yourself. And what I find is then I'm stepping into how can I be of greatest service to, to all? And that's really who and what we are in God. So let us take this into our Science of Mind treatment. We'll take this into prayer. So if you're comfortable with that, go ahead and take a deep breath. Release it. Ah. Oh. So how sweet it is for us to surrender into that natural, profound oneness. God is and God is all there is. Infinite, loving, mother, father, creator, source, 
power, grace, joy, love, supply, living and giving and revealing itself in all as all. This is what I remember of myself. This is who and what I am. And this is the great truth for all beings, for all who are connected to Center for Spiritual Living Seattle in this moment, to our brothers and sisters who are here, those who are on the live stream, to brothers and sisters in all religious faiths and traditions that turn to the oneness we say, we respect, love, appreciate, and acknowledge all. And in this illumination of the divine, I'm so honored to speak a word this day, and what I accept and claim is that a deeper experience of prosperity, wholeness, wealth, right action, wisdom, grace, truth, freedom, happening now as each one. And so I just affirm that every individual is walking in the divine now, including every aspect of money and circulation and work and contribution, blessed and a blessing to the world. And I'm grateful for this. I know that this prayer is acted upon by law, that it's manifest with ease and grace, and we just let it be. We release the word, trust the law, know that what is spoken is so, and together we say, and so it is. Mm. Yeah. Thank you all very much. And thank you to Reverend Karen for the experience she's created for us. Much wisdom today. Thank you so much, Karen. And Karen will be in our conversation corner, which is right through the double doors on my right. You're right when you leave. <laughs> so feel free to go and say hi to Karen. Look at her book, her products. If you would like to spend time with her this afternoon, you can register right there or go to the registration desk. Her workshop begins at 1.30. So you'll have time to go grab lunch, and the food truck is here. So you'll be able to eat lunch. And, and when you go out in the lobby, you're going to notice that there's a lot of artists around carrying their work in because we're getting ready to hang the show, hang the artwork for the new show that will happen this Friday along with the talent show. So this is our community, our artists, our singers, and I don't know what, are there singers and at the talent show? And there's always and. There's always and. So the mystery to be unfolded next Friday. So join us this coming Friday for a fun time together as community. And also happening this afternoon is our own powerful duo in the Wealth Now series, Reverend Sharon and Mae McCarthy. So as you know, these are two sisters, and they're very powerful in terms of manifesting uh, a wealthy, healthy life. And today, they're talking about intuition. So using the tool of intuition to guide you. And finally, this is our last Sunday for brown beer car wash tickets, which our teenagers are selling in order to earn their scholarships to Seabeck Summer Camp. And I've been told to warn you, they only have 24 car wash tickets left. So go get them now <laughs> and help, help them finish up their scholarships. So I ask our ushers to come forward and join me. And while they're doing that, say hi to all that are viewing us online, live in this moment, and in the archive uh, starting tomorrow in the YouTube channel. So as we know, we are always available to you whenever you need to be renewed in that knowing of your perfect life, your perfect self. So I ask you to hold your love offering in your hand and hold your hand to your heart as we join in together as community, renewing our experience, renewing our knowing of the divine that is co-creating and partnering with us in every moment. And as we know that deeply, we renew our sense that each life, including our life, 
has a full, rich potential to pull through us in such unique and creative and wondrous ways. The life that is ours to live, your own unique package of skills and talents and ways of being is being called forth by the world that you may experience your life in the very best way. And so we come together in spiritual community to know this truth for each other, to grow and to learn and evolve together, to witness that growth and expansion in each other, to create a community of spiritual evolving people to lift this community, to lift our city, to lift our world itself, to be together in this goodness that is life. And so I'm so deeply grateful for each one of you that make up this community. And I ask you to reaffirm with me the power of what we are creating here now by saying together, and so it is. <laughs>